Hi, this is S. Lakshmana Chari, working as assistant professor in the Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. We are going to discuss the subject computer organization under architecture. So, in this video, the agenda is the we are going to discuss the basic operations of the computer system. Then we will discuss the instruction cycles. Then we will see the difference between the computer organization and the computer architecture. So before going to discuss the topic, so we will see what is computer. A computer is an electronic device that can be programmed to accept the data, process it and generate the results. So basically the computer is, uh, it is made up of some electronic devices and uh, it is programmed to accept the data from uh, different input devices. After accepting the data from the input device, then it will process and finally it generates the output. So the generated output, it can be uh, given to the user in using some different uh, output devices. So that is a uh, definition of the computer. And uh, here, the most computer systems that found from, from embedded con controllers, embedded controllers found in automobiles, automobiles and uh, home appliances to uh, the personal computers and uh, mainframes. So that have the same basic architecture, basic organization. So from ho home and uh, our uh, automobiles, automobiles or home appliances to the personal computers and mainframe that have the same basic organization. So uh, if you see the organization of any basic computer that has three uh, primary subsystems. It has three primary subsystems or components. So the three subsystems are, the first one is a CPU, Central Processing Unit. So it uh, consists of again three parts are there internally. So that are ALU, Arithmetic and Logic Unit, Control Unit and uh, Registers. So the CPU, it contains these three uh, internal parts. One is a ALU, another one Control Unit and the third one is a Internal Registers. And the second subsystem or component is a, it is a memory subsystem memory subsystem. So already we have seen CPU. CPU means it is a central processing unit. So using this CPU, it performs uh, many operations and uh, it controls the entire computer. Okay. And also the microprocessor can be, it can be considered as the uh, computer's uh, CPU because the, the pro microprocessor is the, it is the heart of the computer. So without microprocessor, we cannot uh, perform any operation uh, in the computer. So that's why the microprocessor can be view, viewed as the, uh, it is a main, it is very important, it plays a very key role. And after that, the memory subsystem. So memory subsystem, already we know. So memory, uh, why we are using memory? Memory, it can be used to store some programs, programs. Okay, now using the memory, so in, uh, in memory, we can store some programs, the programs which are to be executed by the CPU along with the program's data. So in the memory subsystem, we are storing programs that are to be executed by the CPU as well as uh, the program's data because the program which contains different uh, uh, variables and some other data. So that other data uh, we are storing in this uh, memory subsystem. That is a second one. So third one is a I/O subsystem. So I/O subsystem is a, which allows the CPU to interact with the outside world using the I/O devices. So that are the three main or primary subsystems of the basic computer system. And coming to the uh, uh, buses. So already we have seen the different uh, uh, subsystems or components of a, a basic computer. So all these uh, subsystems are interconnected 
or interconnected using this uh, buses so what is the bus definition a bus it is a physically a set of wires physically a set of wires that is called a bus so using this buses all these are uh, uh, different uh, subsystems are connected together so that they can communicate with uh, each other so that is a use of the bus so in a, a basic computer we have three types of buses that are the first one is a address bus second one data bus and third one is a control bus so these are the three main types of the buses so let's see one by one so first one is a address bus okay so first we will see the what are the benefits by using this uh, bus then we will discuss uh, one by one uh, we will discuss all these uh, different types of buses so as the complexity of the computer system increases it is uh, it becomes more efficient to use the buses because as on as uh, the complexity of the computer system increases um, it becomes more efficient to use a bus rather than direct connections between these uh, subsystems because if you use a direct connections uh, uh, between all these uh, subsystems then we will get more number of connections okay so the complexity will increase so whenever we have a more complexity that can be replaced with a, a buses so we have a a number of advantages with the buses that are by using this buses so the buses occupies less space it's it occupies less space and also the buses are less cost less cost okay so these are the advantage and also the buses consumes very uh, the power consumption is very less so these are the uh, different uh, uh advantages of using the buses so they occupy less space uh they consume less power okay and uh, their cost also less so these are the advantages by using the buses so that's why we are going for the uh buses rather than direct connections between the uh, different uh, uh components or subsystems so here we can see the generic organization generic organization of the uh, of these uh, components so how all these different uh, uh, components what we have seen previous how they are connecting with each other so here we have seen different uh, subsystems here this is a cpu central processing unit and a memory subsystem then this is a io subsystem so already we have seen cpu cpu means central processing unit central processing unit so this cpu it is a, it can communicate with the, the memory subsystem or io subsystem okay so memory subsystem so memory subsystem which stores the programs that are executed by the this cpu along with the programs data so mainly the memory memory subsystem it can be used to store some programs as well as the data corresponding to the program and coming to the io subsystem io subsystem so io subsystem it contains uh, multiple io devices io devices io device means input or output devices so the cpu Uh, the IO subsystem allows the CPU to communicate with the different input or output devices. Okay, okay. So we have seen the uh, different buses, address bus, data bus, and control bus. So we will see one by one. So first one is a uh, address bus. So address bus is a uh, it is a top most uh, bus that is a uh, address bus. So this address bus. will carries the address information will carries the address from the cpu to the memory suppose if the cpu wants to access any memory location inside this memory 
then it requires a address so without address we cannot access the memory the memory it contains uh, multiple memory locations all that multiple memory locations it uh, they are having a, a unique address so you, you by using that unique address the cpu can access any that particular memory location so that is the use of the address bus so address bus always it carries the address information from the cpu to the memory subsystem okay so the direction of address bus is a it is a unidirectional it is always from the cpu it is always from the cpu to the memory okay so that is a first bus address bus then data bus second one is a data bus so the data bus which carries the data to be transferred okay right? so which will carries the data to be transferred between the various uh, subsystems are done by using the data bus okay because uh, in a within a, a computer sometimes it is uh, required to transfer the data from one place to the another place so this transfer of the data takes place by using the data bus so that means uh, a group of wires used to carry the data that is nothing but the data bus okay so using this data bus we can transfer the data from cpu to from cpu to memory or memory to cpu so that's why the direction of the data bus is a bidirectional that means uh, you, you can see this uh, direction so it is a bidirectional that means uh, we can transfer the data from cpu to memory as well as uh, memory to the cpu okay and uh, coming to the third one the third one is a control bus control bus so this control bus uh, will carries the control signals control signal uh, like uh, some a read signal write signal like that because when the cpu is accessing the memory or io devices generally we can perform two types of operations one is read and another one is the write that means uh, suppose uh, if the cpu accessing the memory it can perform two types of operations either memory read or memory write memory read means the cpu is reading the cpu is reading the data from the memory the cpu is reading the data from the memory that is called memory memory read another one is, another one is a memory write memory write means the cpu sending the data and the data is placing in the memory that is called memory write similarly we can also perform the a read and write operations with the io devices io devices because from the io device we can read the data similarly the data can be sent to the output device okay so we can perform io read or io write okay so this control bus will decides the type of operation whether we are performing read operation or write operation so that is the use of the control bus so control bus will carries the control signals okay so these are the three different uh, uh, types of buses that we are using in order to communicate uh, different uh, components or subsystems uh, in a basic computer system so here you can see the basic computer organization that is a basic computer organization so already we have seen uh, the basic computer organization it has three a uh, basic uh, components or subsystems that are first one is a cpu it is a cpu means a central processing unit and second one is the memory unit and uh, the third one is a input or output devices io devices so these are the three uh, main important uh, uh, subsystems or parts of the basic computer system so if you see the cpu so the cpu it contains so the cpu it contains three important parts again that are 
ALU. ALU means a uh, arithmetic and uh, logic unit. So ALU. So this ALU it performs uh, different arithmetic and uh, logical operations. So arithmetic operations uh, means a uh, arithmetic uh, means a uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So these are all the different uh, arithmetic operations. And uh, coming to the logical operations, the logical operations are and uh, or XR not. So these are all the different uh, logical operations. So this uh, arithmetic and logical unit it performs all these uh, different arithmetic and logical operations. So that is the uh, use of the ALU and. Uh, the, it contains a control unit. Control unit. So the control unit will generate different uh, timing and control signals which are required for the different uh, modules inside the computer. Okay. Okay. So the control unit will generate the, the timing and the control signals, which will, these are the required to coordinate the different components inside the computer. And the third one is the registers. Registers. So this is the third. Uh, third. So registers. Register means uh, a group of flip flops. Register is nothing but a group of flip flops. That, uh, that is called register. Using the this uh, register, we can store some information. Suppose if you want to consider a 8 bit register. So 8 bit register means uh, the 8 bit register it contains 8 flip flops. 8 flip flops. So flip flop is nothing but it is a single bit uh, storage element. Single bit storage element. That means using the flip flop we can store either 0 or 1. So like that a group of uh, such a, a group of such a uh, 8 flip flops is nothing but a one register, a one 8 bit register. So, suppose if you want a 16 bit uh, register, 16 bit register. So, you need to group a 8, uh, 16 flip flops, 16 flip flops, so that it will form a, a 16 bit uh, register. Okay. So, these are the uh, uh, different parts of the CPU. So, mainly it consists of ALU control unit and the registers and uh, next one is a memory unit then input device and output device so we will see one by one the operations of every module input unit first one is a input unit so this is a input device okay so uh, an input unit of the computer system performs the following functions so first one is a it accepts instructions and data from the outside world. This is a first point. <clears throat> so the input uh, device it will accept the instructions and the data from the outside world. Then it converts these instructions and the data into the computer understandable form. That is a second function of the input device. Then the third is the it supplies the converted instructions and data to the computer system for further processing. So these are the different uh, responsibilities or functions of the input device. Okay. So it, so mainly it performs the three functions. The first one is the uh, it will accepts the instructions or and data from the external world. After that, it will converts into the uh, it will convert into the computer under uh, acceptable form then the third one is uh, the converted instructions and the data uh, given to the computer system for further processing so these are the three main functions of the input device next uh, output device or output unit so the output unit also it performs uh, uh, different functions in that first one is the uh, it accepts the results. So once uh, 
after uh, receiving the inputs from the input device the cpu will process that uh, input data then it generates a results that generated results are given to the output device so it accepts the results produced by the computer which are in coded form and hence uh, cannot be easily understood by us next uh, it converts these coded results into the human understandable form then it supplies the converted results into the outside world so these are the uh, different functions of the output unit and the uh, next unit is a storage unit so already we have seen so storage unit is a uh, we can store some programs as well as the data okay so the data and instructions are required for processing or stored in the memory okay next uh, intermediate results of the processing intermediate uh, results of the processing are also stored in the memory and the final results of the processing before they are releasing to an output device okay once uh, the uh, uh, the cpu process the uh, input values or input data then that final processed results uh, are stored in the storage unit before giving to the output device so this is the storage unit so these are the uh, five basic operations of the computer system so with the basic computer system we can perform different uh, operations so that are inputting storing processing outputting and controlling so these are the different operations so what is inputting inputting means uh, the process of entering the data and instructions into the computer system that is called inputting next is storing storing is nothing but saving the data instructions data or instructions uh, to make them readily available for initial or additional processing whenever required that is a storing next to processing once uh, the required input values are taken from the input device then the computer will process the those inputs and it will generate a results and outputting output means so uh, once the process is completed processing the inputs is completed then the processed outputs will be given to the output device that is called outputting and controlling controlling means uh, directing the manner and sequence in which all of the above operations are performed that is called controlling so these are all the different uh, operations of the computer and coming to the instruction cycle so instruction cycle is a uh, very important in order to execute the programs okay so we will see the definition of the instruction cycle the instruction cycle is the cycle that the central processing unit follows from boot up boot up until the computer has shut down in order to process the instructions okay so instruction cycle means uh, uh, the cycle taken by the cpu starting from the boot up till the shutdown that is called instruction cycle so this instruction cycle we can also call uh, fetch decode execute cycle we can also call fetch decode execute cycle so we will see what is fetch uh, decode and execute in the next slides okay so basically a program is uh, residing in the memory the program reside in the memory unit of the computer consists of a sequence of instructions suppose you have a a hardware hard disk okay so in a hard disk you have a, a high level language program high level language program that means a program program means uh, a sequence of instructions that is nothing but the program 
and here consider a high level language so high level language high level language program is stored in the hard disk so if this high level language program uh, this directly the machine cannot understand because the high level language is the uh, uh, human understandable language but the same high level language the computer it cannot understand because the computer can understand only the machine language that is nothing but uh, binary language zeros and ones so we are using the compiler using the compiler this high level language program we are converting into the machine understandable language and then that will be stored in the main memory that is uh, called ram ram means random access memory so uh, on default our programs will be in the hard disk but whenever the programs are executing the programs will be loaded from the hard disk into the main memory from the main memory only the programs will be executed so that's why one after converting this uh, high level language program into the machine understandable language then that will be stored in the ram okay so converting uh, converting a program from high level language into the machine understandable language that is uh, nothing but a machine language like uh, some 10 10 11101 so like that so only the machine can understand that binary language okay so so the program is uh, executed in the computer by going through a instruction cycle for each instruction so the pins uh, program already we have seen program program means uh, a sequence of instructions so every instruction it has to undergo a uh, this instruction cycle okay so then only the program will be executed suppose if the program it contains some 10 lines so every that 10 lines it has to undergo a instruction cycle okay instruction cycle uh, okay so instruction cycle again it is a uh, subdivided into different uh, uh, phases so that are fetch fetch decode and third one is a uh, read the effective address and fourth one is a uh, execute okay so instruction cycle so every instruction cycle it consists of uh, these uh, four different phases then only it will be considered as a one instruction cycle okay so here you can see the uh, diagram so uh, first one is the instruction fetch once after instruction fetching then decoding then read the address from the memory and fourth one is the uh, execute the instruction so these are the different uh, phases of the instruction cycle okay so first one is a uh, fetch an instruction from the memory fetch an instruction from the memory so always the instructions are fetched from the memory because already we have seen in previous slide so the program is uh, uh, in the hard disk so from the hard disk the instructions will be fetched fetching is nothing but retrieving the instruction from the memory that is called fetching so first phase is a fetch an instruction from the memory so that is a first phase after fetching the instruction from the memory the second step is to decode the instruction decode so decode the instruction so decode is nothing but uh, uh, so the process of converting the high level language program into the machine understandable language that is called decoding that means here uh, in the decoding phase it will determine what type of operation it has to perform that will be the decoding phase okay so in the decoding phase uh, the cpu will decide what type of operation it has to perform that is a second phase that is nothing but the decode third one is a read the effective address okay so the third step uh, it depends upon the instruction because uh, some instructions may use the direct addressing 
and some instructions are used as indirect addressing. Okay, so the third step, whether it is applicable to applicable or not, it depends upon the uh, type of the addressing mode of the instruction. Okay, suppose if the instruction having indirect addressing mode, uh, indirect address, then the third step will be applicable. That means uh, it reads the effective address of the effective address from the memory if the instruction has an indirect address. Suppose if the instruction having a direct address, then no need of the third phase. Directly then we can execute the instruction. So fourth phase. Fourth phase is a execute the instruction. Executing the instruction is nothing but uh, implementing the operation. Okay. So suppose if any add operation is there, add add means addition. Okay. So initially it will be fetched from the memory. After fetching, so in the second decoding phase it will decode. So what type of it will decide what type of operation it has to perform. So here what operation we are performing? We are performing a addition, addition operation. Okay. After that it will checks whether the intersection contains direct addressing or indirect addressing. So if it is having direct address, the third phase is not required, then directly we can execute that particular intersection. Suppose if the intersections intersection having indirect addressing, then we need to calculate the we need to calculate or read the effective address from the memory. Okay, then the fourth step is a uh, uh, fourth phase is a uh, execute the instruction. That means uh, it will perform. So here uh, our example is a uh, add. So that means uh, in the execute uh, execute phase, the addition operation will be performed. Okay. So these are the different uh, phases of the instruction cycle. The first one is a uh, fetch. Fetching is nothing but retrieving the instruction from the memory. Second one is a uh, decoding. Decoding means uh, interpreting. Interpreting the Instruction. Third one is a read the effective address from the memory. Fourth one is a execute the instruction. Okay, so these are the different phases. So if any instruction it undergo all these are uh, fetch, decode, read the uh, effective address from the memory and execute. So if the instruction completes uh, this uh, entire all these four phases that uh, will be considered as a one complete instruction cycle. And finally we will discuss uh, the difference between the computer uh, architecture and the computer organization. So first uh, see the uh, computer architecture. So computer architecture is a, a functional behavior of the computer system functional behavior of the computer system. That means uh, here the uh, what type of functionalities is uh, what type of functionalities that are to be performed by the computer. So that will be decided by the computer architecture. And coming to the computer organization. So computer organization it deals with the structural relationship of the computer system. That means uh, structural relationship means uh, uh, once we decided what are the hardware required, then in the computer organization, how those hardware will be, uh, how those hardware will be interlinked, interlinked with each other. That will be the computer organization. And the next one is uh, the architecture. It describes what the computer does. It describes what the computer does. That is a uh, that will be decided by the computer architecture. Then the computer organization it describes how it uh, does it. Okay, how how does uh, how it does it? That is a second difference. The third one is a uh, the computer architecture it deals with the high level design issues. So high level design issues like uh, some computer design or system design. And uh, on the other hand, the computer organization, it deals with uh, low level design issues. So low level design issues, uh, nothing but uh, the logic or circuit design. And fourth one is uh, 
the architecture indicates its uh, hardware the architecture it indi uh, indicates the hardware whereas the computer or the organization it uh, indicates the performance performance of the computer and uh, when suppose when you are uh, designing any computer first we need to consider the computer architecture first we need to consider the computer architecture then after uh, deciding the computer architecture then we are going for the the next one that is a computer organization okay so when you are desi designing any computer system first we need to consider the computer architecture once the architecture is completed then we are moving to the computer organization so computer ar architecture is nothing but uh, what functionalities that are to be implemented that is the computer architecture and the computer organization organization is the so those functionalities how we are implementing that is a computer organization and uh, the computer architecture uh, we can also call instruction set architecture shortly we can call isa instruction set architecture and this computer organization we can also call micro architecture and uh, the architecture involves the logic of the system the logic of the system that includes uh, instruction sets uh, addressing modes instruction sets uh, addressing modes data types etc so these are all uh, come under the uh, architecture whereas uh, the computer organization it involves uh, the physical components physical components uh, like uh, circuit design alu memory adder signals and the peripherals so these are the uh, main differences between the computer architecture and uh, computer organization so in this uh, class we have discussed about the uh, basic computer organization thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates